the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. And I welcome to you to the Church of St. Thomas the Martyr, uh, here on the River Mono in Monmouth, Wales. And we're still in lockdown, but hopefully not for long. This has been a long and interminable lockdown, hasn't it? And I just can't wait until it's all over and we can get back to normal and start singing again in church. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Hopefully by when? Come on, give me a, give me a month. <laughs> Hopefully by Easter, we'll be able to sing again in church and uh, all of that to the glory of God. Amen. So listen to the gospel of Christ according to John. Glory to you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, the theme of the readings for the second Sunday before Lent is creation. And thankfully, at the moment, we can enjoy creation. We can go out as often as we like, not like the uh, first lockdown where the government made us go out only once a day for some crazy reason. Well, on this occasion, we can go out as often as we want, as long as we're obviously careful and distanced. And so we can go into God's good creation. And we mightn't be able to go into cafes and restaurants, but we can enjoy the beauty of what God has created. And the Old Testament reading for this Sunday reminds us how we are all linked to creation. Then I was constantly at his side, it says. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world, and delighting in mankind. Do we care enough for the world around us, the sea, the beaches, the farmland? Farming in a way that preserves the land for future generations rather than farming just for short-term gain. Do we delight in God's creation? Our gospel reading for this morning can be compared with the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1. For the phrase, in the beginning, is used in both Genesis and in John. And also the difference between darkness and light is also there in Genesis and in John's gospel. The Word of God through whom all things were made. The feminine wisdom of God who delighted in God's presence at creation is made flesh, is with us, and is our light and our life. And that light of life will never die, says the Scripture. No darkness that we experience in our lives can ever overcome that light. But sometimes it does seem as if the darkness is all there is. And that is when we need each other. We need to remind each other the, the light is eternal and it will never be put out. Our own lights may flicker for a while 
And there may be times during this pandemic when your light has flickered for a while and then you meet someone at a distance. We've always got to put in brackets these days, at a distance, to encourage people to know that we haven't been naughty. So when we meet someone at a distance, we can perhaps bring our light to encourage their flickering light and help them to keep on going for a while. Sometimes that darkness feels like an encircling darkness, and it feels like a gloom and a despair that we cannot shake. But being part of the body of Christ means that someone else nearby is carrying a light whilst ours is flickering, and they can hold that light up for us until our darkness passes. At another time, it may be our turn to hold up the Christ light for someone else. There is darkness all around us in the way we have manipulated and damaged our world, in the tragedies and in the disasters we hear about daily, and in our own lives and in the lives of others whom we know. In the past year, we have had to learn different ways of worshipping online and on Zoom, and it It's great, but it's not the same. Our church services and our community activities have had to be stopped because of repeated lockdowns and social distancing and businesses have been destroyed and livelihoods have been threatened and people have died without their loved ones nearby. But God is still with us and the light of God still shines in our world. In the darkness, the light shines and refuses to be overcome. The light offers us new hope, new strength, new courage, and always a new beginning. And our gospel reading this morning expresses the mystery which is at the heart of our faith, that God became flesh, took on the substance of his own creation. The reading from Proverbs is full of delight as the voice of wisdom talks about rejoicing in the world at the very beginning of creation. And the deepest sense of Proverbs reveals God delighting in creation and of wisdom as God's delight dancing the creation into being. It speaks of a new creation where everything is as it should be and anything is possible. And it's interesting in our two readings that in John's Gospel, he has a very masculine understanding of the one who stands with God at the beginning, through whom all things were created. But in Proverbs, we have a very feminine understanding of the one who was with God in the beginning. Wisdom, feminine Sophia, whereas John has masculine logos. There in the beginning, feminine wisdom, and masculine logos, merge into one being who becomes flesh, and dwells among us, full of grace and truth. Have we lost the sense that God delights in us, and God rejoices rejoices in His creation? Maybe it's time to reflect again on how we might respond to God's love for us, the God who came among us in Christ, the God who rejoices at our creation, Perhaps we need to change our mind again about how God sees us and how God sees all things. We are no longer at the beginning where things were unspoiled. Our world has clearly lost its way in many ways, but the light of life and the beauty of God still shines in our world. The Word of God and the wisdom of God still dance in the midst of creation bringing light and life to our world. Perhaps we need our eyes opened to be able to see where where God is dancing among his creation. And so a prayer. Creator God, we thank and praise you for all the wonders of nature. Thank you for creating such a beautiful world, the mountains and the oceans, the sun and the moon, the tall trees and the tiny flowers, for fish and birds and cows and cats and people. We thank you for placing us here in your marvelous world and for always being here with us. Open our eyes to see your word and your wisdom dancing in creation and open our hearts to walk in harmony with your ways. We ask our prayers in the name of the cosmic Christ. Amen. 